There's so many people who are suffering and they don't know what to do because they have to be like this even though they are like this. So we have the high rate, high suicide rate in Japan. 70 people are killing themselves in a day. Every day, even today, 70 people are trying to kill themselves because there's so much pressure, so much stress from the, the neighbors, from the schools, and from the um, companies and society. So how can they fit in there? There's no reason to be here. So it's so easy just to die, kill myself, rather than, rather than fighting and struggling. Because there's no way that they can fit in here. So they'll kill themselves. 70 people, they are killing every day. And we have a, another big problem right now. We call hikikomori. At the age of 20 and 30, uh, about 700,000 people, they are totally, completely shutting themselves down from the society. They are withdrawing into their room, and they don't come out a month and years. Into little tiny room, they are doing the the, the computer and playing with the games 24 hours a day and watching TV all day and they don't even come out of the room. Just go to the bathroom, that's it. But months and years, they completely shut down themselves from the society, even from the family. Because without Jesus, how can they find the hope? Without Jesus, how can they find the reason to live? So most of the people, they end up killing themselves. And the parents, when they open up the room, here's a son, dead. Here's a precious beloved daughter, dead. But thank you for your prayer. We've been doing the five different kind of ministry. One is a music ministry, and a music is a very big open door for a non-Christian to come into the um, church. So, but the church is so small, 15, 20 people, average, and, but they call us up and oh, we wanna have a chapel concert, church concert, and we wanna open up the church for the neighbors. Could you come? And the pastor said, but we can't pay you. We can pay you maybe the transportation fee because we are such a small, tiny church. But that's okay. Could you come? And we say, yes, we'll be happy to be there. The money doesn't matter. If we can reach out one less soul, that's the greatest joy that God is giving to us. So we'll be happy to be there. Okay, we'll be right there. So we go up north and down in this house and everyone that God wants us to be there and to share gospel. We start singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The people start crying and their hearts get opened up. They can feel the love of God because the Holy Spirit is working there. Second ministry, we do the kids ministry. Every Monday, we go to a Grace Christian kindergarten. It's a Christian kindergarten, but none of the teachers, none of the students are Christian. Just we are the only one. We do voluntarily, but every Monday they have a chapel time. They don't know anything about Bible. We are the only one, so we go there, and every month we can get share God's love to the three hundred children. And we t t teach in the songs to Jesus loves me, this I know. Then kids go back home and the mom asks them, what did you learn? What kind of so uh, songs did you learn at the, from the, the, the chapel, chapel time? And kids sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Mom, God loves me. God loves you. And the little children, they are just spreading the good news to the family, to the mom and dad. And God is giving me as a great opportunity to reach out to 300 little children. They don't know anything about Jesus Christ. And we get to the vacation Bible school, uh, August 25th and 26th, we 
up and already when we get back to Japan, uh, one of the big church in Tokyo, we, get, we can get to the vacation Bible school. Uh, Ryan, the shoots, they, uh, he told us how to do the puppet, you know, a couple of years ago. So with our girls and we do the, all the puppets and stuff and, the, and all the kids are so happy and, and we do all those decorations in small church, but we do all the decoration and the kids, they never seen those kind of things. They never see the puppet going up and down and sharing about God's love and, and all the, about 50 children comes to a vacation Bible school. That's just amazing. And God has been using the Vacation Bible School. The street, third ministry is a street evangelist. Mark, every morning, he gets up in the, early in the morning from 7 to 9. Um, we use a train a lot in, in Japan. On the platform, 100 people are waiting to get on the train in the morning. And then um, he goes there and he stands up front of the people and he screams to the people, God loves you! There's only true God! He never leave you alone. Come to him. Come to him and you will find the hope. You will find the truth. Come to know him because Jesus loves you. And he sings all different kind of singing songs. And sometimes policemen came because someone, you know, called the police station. And a couple of policemen came. But Mark said, "Policeman, God loves you too. Come to church." And through that a street evangelism, a couple of people started coming. Um, to our home. They want to know more about Bible. We started the Bible study and more people started coming and two years ago we started the church. We didn't, we, we didn't do it like we're going to plant a church. We didn't do that. But God sent the people to our house and we started the church and our house is so small like a, maybe half of this you know, stage, you know. So Oh, everybody cannot fit, fit there, so we, now you, we are using the kindergarten's building, but the, about the stage of about the size of this stage, and now including children, 15 to 20 people are coming. And if I, we are gone, my parents are pastors, so they are taking uh, over and preaching for us. But uh, so we are doing the church mu uh, music ministry, kids ministry, street evangelism. Now we are doing the church planting, and fifth on this mercy ministry. Now we have a Costco only 15 minutes away from the house. Can you believe that? Costco! And Mark is so happy, but uh, every Thursday we get the day old bread from Costco. We give those bread to the homeless people, to the poor people. We bring up to the north. Six years ago, we had a big tsunami and earthquake, if you remember. Tons of people got killed and and uh, because of the new Korea power, new Korea power plants, uh, because of the radiation program, there's a, a lot of people who can never go back to their house. So they are still living in the temporary housing. So we go there with bread, and not only the bread, we bring the bread of life. And we sing and share God's life with people. So we are doing five different kind of ministry. But when we go, once out of the house, we have a constant battle every day. Buddha, Buddhas are everywhere, you know, temples and shrines are everywhere. On the street, little Buddha here, little Buddha, Buddha by the corner. When we visit our family, um, I mean, our friends, even in their uh, friend's house, there's a house Buddha here and there. So we have, we have to fight all the time. But you know, just like Paul heard the vision of the, Macedon the man of Macedonia, he, you know, the, the man of Ma Macedonia, he was standing up begging Paul, come, come to us, come to us and help us. Whenever we see the Japanese people, we can feel the soul is crying out. The soul, the heart is crying out and begging, help us, help us, come and help us. We can't find the hope, we can't find the life, we can't find the joy to living. Come and help us. And when we meet the people, I say, 
have no silver or gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. We have no silver or gold, but we have Jesus Christ. Isn't it great? It doesn't matter, you know, the, the, the money or big house or all the lots of material stuff or career or education. Those are important stuff too. But if we have Jesus Christ, I will give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up and walk. That's what we are doing in Japan. But we have a battle all the time when sometimes we get um, knocked knock down, you know, by the Satan, like, I fell off. But you know, when I just fell off on the ground and I feel like oh, I can't go anymore. I can't stand up anymore. I want to go back to America. Sometimes I feel like that. But when I get knocked down, I feel your prayer. There is somebody who is praying for me. There is something emotional in that city, in that town. There is faith we sincerely praying for us, for Japan. When I feel the prayer, your prayer and your love, I can feel the presence of the Lord. Jesus came down and he said, this car. I won this battle already. I knocked out the Satan already. So just don't worry about it. Be strong. Be bold. For I am with you. So on this through your prayer, by your prayer, we can fight the battle in Japan to win lost souls. I want to end up with the last um, testimony, the tiny testimony. Um, there's a, a woman who came to know the Lord through Mark's evangelism, but the, she has a little brother, but the, this brother has a lot of problems. He had no relationship with his friends and the families, and he got divorced, and the kids even left him. He was all by himself. He lost a job, but he had a cancer, uh, he had uh, two, three cancers, and he just, he can't find any hope anymore, so he just drank the alcohol, alcohol every day. But the sister became a Christian. She started reaching out him. And she, she asked me us to pray for him. One day she called us up and she said that uh, he's in the hospital right now. He's in coma. Could you pray? And we said, okay, we will be there right now. We ran to the hospital and here the brother the skin and bone is so skinny and laying on in, in the bed and he's in coma, he can't speak, he can't, uh, you know, he's just there. And we pray and Mark was praying beside me and I share the gospel because he never heard of Jesus Christ. How can he find hope? I share that Jesus loves you, Jesus died on the cross. I share one hour. We sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. We sang you know, a couple of songs, and we just asked God to have the mercy upon him, and we just prayed and prayed. And after, one, uh, after like two hours, I kind of felt like I have to ask him. I asked him, do you believe Jesus? Do you want to go to heaven? Then that time, he said, yes. That was the first and last word in two hours we heard. And he had a tears in his eyes. Then that moment we knew he got saved only by the grace of Jesus Christ. And after one hour, he went to heaven. Anyone who calls the name of the Jesus, name of Jesus Christ, will be saved. But if he never heard of Jesus Christ, how can he be saved? 
who there's nobody who speak you know about preach about Jesus Christ how can they hear about Jesus Christ but with your prayer and by the mercy of God grace of God one lost Japanese person he got saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and right now he's in heaven someday when you go to the heaven I'm sure you will meet a lot of Japanese people and a lot of Japanese people will thank you thank you because you pray for Mark and Rutsuko and because you pray for Japan we are here in heaven thank you thank you thank you every day shall bow Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you for your prayer and please continue to pray for us in Japan. Good morning. The service starts at 10.15 and ends at 12.30, is it? <laughs> well, I just want to share just a few more minutes. Uh, as my wife and as we introduce Mark Beto and Lutzko and my three daughters are here. Uh, Kishel is 17, uh, Jessica is 15, and Mardika is 12. And where are they? There they are. Can you guys raise your hand at least? They hate standing in church. We go all over Japan singing and they're just like, do we have to stand? <laughs> so, but it's so good to be with you here today. As many of you probably know, and maybe, many maybe have, might not know, uh, I used to sit down here when all the youth was down there for two years uh, before going off to college. And, uh, and so I was a part of the church for about two years. And, uh, and even my good friend Leo Swanson's came back to Minnesota and he used to sit down here with us and you might, I don't know if there's anyone who sat down there after or before us or with us, but uh, it's really good to be in church and hear the word of God. So I'd like to pray and then read a small part of scripture now. Father, I pray that you would bless this time and trust that you would uh, continue to speak in our hearts through the word and that we might know the love that you have for each one of us in Jesus Christ and the promise that you have for us in the fellowship with the Holy Spirit just because you're living God and you love us and you're a gracious God, we thank you. And so just bless this time now in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18 through the end of the chapter. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to the end of the chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." So all this was done that it might be fulfilled through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Merry Christmas. Why is he reading that now? But if you are 
picked up on probably the basic principles of the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament. This is very clearly, call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I am a sinner. I've been a sinner ever since I was old enough to choose. But by the grace of God and the mercy that he's bestowed upon me, I'm able to stand here today and say that Jesus Christ lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face today. Because he lives, I can face the past. And what Jesus says is, your sins are forgiven. I will remember them no more. What a wonderful hope. What a wonderful blessing. What a wonderful experience. And what a wonderful promise that we have in Christ. Your sins are forgiven. There's no greater joy than to share the love of Jesus Christ for me. Because, as the Bible says, God makes some evangelists, teachers, some calls some to uh, uh, gifts of uh, encouragement, and, and there's all kinds of different gifts that I mentioned in the Bible, and, and so many times we don't quite understand how they work. But in my personal life, after I became basically a real Christian, but I would like to prefer to say uh, a repentant and humbled and obedient Christian to the best of my weakness. I've experienced that the promises in the Bible, old and new, and the promises that are within the words and the text of, this, of, of our Bible, no matter what translation you got, you got some pretty good stuff in there that, that is very clear about who God is and how he works in people's lives. And you look from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and then you look from the New Testament to the, the end in Revelations, you can see that God is going to do great things in people's lives when they trust in him. But just trusting is a word that includes obedience. Because if you obey Christ, you're trusting him to fulfill the promises that he has for you in your life. And when I was in college, I knew that I wasn't walking with the Lord. I had gone to Camp Shamana. I had gone to some of the different events in college. I was going to, went to Campus Crusade for or Christian Fellowship and uh, University for Christ. And then finally it was Christian Campus Crusade. And, but I, I was not transformed inside. I didn't know the peace of Christ. I didn't know the power of his love, nor the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I wasn't a transformed and dedicated Christian, but I knew, and Jesus was talking to me. And so Psalms 57, one day I opened the Bible up, and Psalms 57 said, Be merciful to me, O Lord. Be merciful to me, O Lord, and I will take my refuge under your wings, and you will save me from my calamities. I didn't know I had a lot of calamities at the time, and I still don't know how many I have today. But I know that in that moment when I was praying and when I read that word, the word stuck with me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. So every day I would wake up and I'd think, have mercy on me. And I would, that the word of God was working and cultivating a new heart and, and a new attitude and a new desire. And I started to, to call out to him. I'd say, have mercy on me. I don't know what you are and how you are and what such circumstances you are in your life, but we have a gracious God, merciful and abundantly willing to forgive. So I called out, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And in the midst of all of that, I didn't know what God was doing, but when I, I graduated, I went to Hawaii to, and I was working with Northwest Airlines as a flight attendant. In the midst of that time, I chose not to live with flight attendants. There's a lot of wonderful ones there, but there's also a lot of worldly ones, and that's the same in any career, I imagine. But in the midst of that, I said, well, I'm going to go to Hawaii. I don't want to live with the guys that I'm living with right now, that's for sure. And even if I wasn't a Christian, I wouldn't want to live with those guys. But in the fact of the matter, I, I called uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, and I said, you know, I, I'm moving to Hawaii, and I'm just looking for a place to stay. And they said, well, that's great, because we've been praying for a roommate. 
And so I moved in with them. And so there was the four of us. And in the midst of that, my roommate was really great. He, I mean, he was, he was always uh, had a kind heart, never judgmental. And he was truly seeking the, and praying for me and wanting the best for me. And so I'd come home some days and the guy would be in the closet praying. What? So I walk in the room, and the closet is right there. I walk in the room, go into my bed, and, oh, hey, Craig. <laughs> I just keep going. And, and one day I walked in the house, and he had the sofa pulled away from the wall, and he was sitting behind the sofa with the cushions, and he was praying. And I walked by the, hey, Craig. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what's with all this private and kind of weird stuff? And his, but he, you know, he was just making his own personal space to take time with, to know the Lord. Well, he was praying for me, and in the midst of that, the Lord was also speaking to me. And I remember the Lord speaking. Well, I couldn't pray very much at that time, but I remember that every night I would roll out of bed and get on my knees and pray. The Lord was saying, get out of bed, get on your knees and pray. And I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know how to pray. I was so filled with myself and so filled with my ways that my heart was far from the Lord, but yet I was so empty that I could hear his voice reverberating in the darkness, echoing in the midst of the pain and the, and the wanting to be loved, wanting to know. And so he spoke, get on your knees and pray. So I rolled out of bed and I got on my knees and prayed. And the only prayer that I could pray at that time of my life was the one my mother taught to me. Thank you, mother. Thank you, dad. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I awake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. It's the only prayer I could pray because I knew I had no worthiness, no righteousness, no, no, nothing in me that would be acceptable to God except he was looking at my broken heart. And in the midst of that, he started to speak to me. I sat on the couch reading the Bible little by little. And, and then in the midst of all that, I was wondering what God's doing in my life. And, and then one day at the North Shore, I went surfing with my buddies in the, the big waves of Japan, I suppose as tall as this, built, this chapel here. And it's like, you know, you don't care if you live or die. You can do anything. But in the midst of that, when I was pounded by the waves and upside down, churning in the water, and then the second time that happened and I was in the deep depths of the water, I cried, Lord, please give me one more chance to make my life right. So I'm here today, and some of you have probably heard that before, but I'm here today to tell you that there is a God. And he is powerful and mighty and he can reach down into the depths of the waves of Hawaii and he can reach down in the depths of your heart and take out the despair, the suffering, and the sorrow and he can set you free. He can give you life and give you eternal life. He has the power to condemn and he has the power to set you free. The condemned nation was taken upon his shoulders, the son of God, his only son, the righteous one, the one who came to die for our sins. He died on that cross so that you might be set free. And when you're set free in Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation. Romans chapter 8. If you read the book, you read the chapter of Romans 8, you'll see that then God wants us to walk and live with him and have fellowship with him. And so in Matthew chapter 1. Call his name Jesus for he will save his people from his, their sins. They're gone. They are no more. He remembers them no more. They're set apart from you as far as the east is from the west. But Matthew chapter 1 and the Bible doesn't stop with the forgiveness of sins. That's just the start. Because it says, call his name. His name, he will be called. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Which is translated, God with us. It's so hard in the everyday grind of life, in the troubles of this world, to remember exactly what we're doing sometimes. But when you spend a morning, a day, when you spend a life with Jesus, the next thing you know, the puzzle of life is coming together. You get a little piece up here, you don't quite understand it. You look at this piece at the moment, you don't know where to put it. But in the grand picture of life, when Jesus Christ is working in it, and you're giving your life to him, suddenly all that picture and that puzzle comes all together, and you see that God's glory is being revealed in your life, and he 
has done something wonderful with it. It's amazing to be able to stand here today and tell you that God loves you. That God loves you so much that he would send his only son. That he himself would become a man. And that he would forgive our sins. And then he says he gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's some days when I don't walk with Jesus. And some days there's times when I don't watch the clock. But I, I'm so excited to talk about Jesus. Because I know that his word never comes back void. If you read it in the morning, if you read it in the evening, and I hope you read it all day long, something great will happen in your life. Because it's not Mark Beto, it's not Lutsuko Beto who do anything in Japan but exist in the grace of God. The only reason why I can get up in the morning to go out and face the world is because Jesus Christ is with me. He's inside me, empowered me. He has given me a new heart. He has given me a new life, a second chance at life. God is with us. God is with you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is wanting to work in you and through you give your life 100% to Jesus all the time, every day, every moment. And the next thing you know, you'll be someplace where you never thought you would be. In a, in a situation where you can say, my Savior lives. I have been redeemed. And I hope that many of us here, all of us here, have been experiencing that. But for me, I'm weak. And so I come to Minnesota, and I'm so gracious to have parents that help us come and want to see us and put up with us and uh, feed us ice cream and, and do all these wonderful things for us. Because it's refreshing to come back from a culture that's very strict and something I wasn't growing up in. But most importantly, it is just really nice to be with other Christians. It's just really nice to be here today. But as I said, I am weak. And when we come back to Minnesota, uh, I don't always have the time I want to read my Bible. I mean, the family routine, the fam my mom and dad have their routine, and, and my kids have their routine and needs, and shopping, and all of these things. And then this year... We were fortunate to come back with our mileage, so I was able to bring our kids four, two weeks before my wife came. She was taking care of a church over there, and now her parents, as she said, are, are doing it for us. Now we're away. But, so I come back, and I, we, two weeks, and then my wife comes, and next day we went camping. You guys got a great place to live here in the United States. My goodness, we have half the people in the United States living in the size of Hawaii. Well, it's a little bigger than that, but, but it's a wonderful country. So we went there, and I'm thinking, i got to go home, and on, we're going to come back on Saturday night. And to get back on Saturday night at 9 o'clock, and I'm thinking, no time in camping and all this time to read the Bible and pray what I should be praying and what I should be saying and making a great message. And I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, what am I going to say? And all those two weeks of camping, and my heart is kind of churning, and what should I do? And so, by the grace of God, and probably a little town, a little church out in South Dakota who prays for people who drive down I-90 from Rapid City to Sioux Falls, because we flew by the Black Hills on the way. But uh, as I'm driving there, you know, I'm not even really thinking too much about what I should be saying at that moment, just driving. And... Uh, I start singing this song. Suddenly this song starts coming up in my heart. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth living just because he lives. The song just started 
coming up, and I was humming it at first, and a little bit more, the heart started opening up, and I started singing the words. And my mom was sitting next to me, what is he talking about? What is he singing? I've heard that melody. I know that melody. She told me later on it's her favorite song, but I started this, singing the words, a song like this. I'm seeing in Japanese, and so I'm thinking to myself, goodness, my mom knows this song, but wouldn't it be a blessing if I sang it in English? So I started singing it in English. And so the Holy Spirit was answering my prayers. The Lord was working. God was working in there and, and uh, opening my heart to him as I came back that Saturday night driving. And then there it was. Five minutes ahead. And I'd been singing for about ten minutes. And there was the sign. Big billboard in the middle of nowhere. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I thought to myself, goodness, that's pretty straight. Maybe they should have put a little, and he loves you. <laughs> but he did. And that's the message. That's all it is. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And so I continued to sing that song a little bit. You know, we don't never know how God is going to use our prayers. God never, you never know how God is going to use you in your life. But when you trust him and obey him, he will do something that you never expected. A life, a heart will be touched and changed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to share that you live. Thank you that you reached out in the depths of my despair and you taught me who you are. Thank you for forgiving my heart, the things of my heart, and thank you for taking the rock of, the heart of stone out of my heart and gave me a heart of flesh. And then thank you for being with me and being my God and helping me and teaching me and helping me to walk in your ways. I pray that each person here today and, and that each person we could speak to this new week would come to know you just a little more. That each person would come to see how wonderful you are and that they could just grasp and see a little bit of the puzzle of their life in you. So speak to us today in our, in our daily words and actions and lead us out from this chapel today. And thank you for, for being my God. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being a God who forgives sins. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. There's hope. Tell a friend. He loves you and he loves them too. Thank you.